friends, I hope you're having a great Saturday. It's actually really rainy today and it's a good day to stay inside and read books and play games or watch TV or movies or just hang out with your family. So I hope that you get to do that. That's what I'm going to do today. So I have some things to show you. I have different types of crosses here at my house and I bet you also have different crosses at home too, right? So I actually have some jewelry that has crosses on it, but I wanted to show you this cross. I think I made this one like many months ago when the coronavirus first started with Legos. You might have also made a Lego cross. So my Lego cross is kind of cute, right? Then I have this one. This is a really simple cross with just thin pieces of metal and a piece of wood on the back. You might hear Fauci meowing right now. And then this one, I kind of like this one. This one is just a big chunk of wood. Nothing fancy about this. It's not perfect. It's not pretty necessarily, right? But it's simple, made out of wood. And then I have a really different one here because BJ, my husband, he grew up Catholic. And in the Catholic churches, they have crosses that look like this. Isn't that different? What do you notice is different between this cross and this one? That's right. On this cross over here in this hand, there's actually someone on it, that's Jesus, who's dying on the cross, which is kind of sad to think about. When we see crosses like this, we often forget that the purpose of this was for Jesus to die on it. So it's interesting to have different crosses, right? We need to remember that this cross, while it's pretty cool to look at, was really designed so that Jesus could die on it. But it's interesting, right? This one has Jesus on the cross, why do you think that on this cross there isn't Jesus? Is it because we don't care that Jesus died on the cross? No, that's probably not the answer. The reason that we don't have Jesus on the cross in our churches usually is because we remember that Jesus didn't stay on the cross. Jesus died and then rose again. He came back to life, right? So they're both different, but they tell the same story, but in different ways. So we're going to read a story today about Jesus telling the disciples what it means to follow him. And he's going to talk about the cross. So if you have a regular Bible at home, you can open up to Matthew chapter 16, verse 21. I'm going to read and you can follow along. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. That's Easter. That's why we don't have Jesus on the cross because he was raised from the dead. And then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world, but forfeit their life? Or what will they give them in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. There's a lot going on in this story, right? So we hear what Jesus is saying to Peter. Remember last week, Peter was like the good disciple because he had all the answers. He knew who Jesus was. And Jesus says, Peter, your faith is so great that you are the rock, like this rock. It's heavy, it's solid, it's sturdy. Your faith is so sturdy and strong that I'm gonna hand you the keys to the kingdom and we're gonna build the church because of your faith, right? But then, Peter says something that he probably shouldn't have said. He didn't think about it. And he says to Jesus, no, Jesus, I don't want you to die. I don't want you to have to suffer. And then Jesus says to Peter, 
Peter, you're like a stumbling block for me. Don't say those things. Don't tempt me with the easier path. Sometimes we like things to go our way. Actually, not sometimes, all the time. We always want life to be easy. We don't like it when life gets hard. We want things to be super easy. We don't want to trip and fall on rocks. We don't want hard things to happen in our life. But Jesus is saying hard things are going to happen if you follow me. Life is hard. When you follow Jesus, that means you need to give some things up. When Jesus says you need to pick up your cross and carry me, he's saying you need to make a choice about the things that are important in your life. Sure, it's great to have new technology and to have all the latest and greatest gadgets and to have cool sneakers and clothes and go on all these great vacations. Those things are great, but sometimes we need to let go of some of those things in order to care about other people and in order to follow Jesus. Jesus hung out all the time with the people who were different. Jesus spent all of his ministry helping people see that the way forward in life was caring about other people, loving other people, sacrificing, letting go of things that don't matter, and focusing on the things that do matter. In all of our lives, we have things that matter to us, but might not matter to God. For example, I really love being able to watch cooking shows on TV. Sounds kind of boring, right? And sometimes I probably spend too much time watching those cooking shows. It's not really hurting anyone, right? But instead, I should probably be spending more time with other people and with God, and I could probably spend more time praying, and I should definitely spend more time reading the Bible instead of just watching cooking shows, right? That's an easy example. But we all have things in our lives that we should let go of and do better and focus on in a different way, right? If we think about seeing people who are homeless or seeing people who are asking for food or money, we sometimes ignore those people. And we have to always wonder, is that what Jesus would do? Would Jesus ignore those people? Or would he sacrifice his time? Would he sacrifice some of his ideas and pay attention to those people? And we know that's actually what Jesus did do. Jesus did that all the time. He let people interrupt him and Jesus healed them and Jesus talked to people and we can do the same thing. So will you pray with me? Fold your hands and close your eyes and do what you do when you pray. Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the cross and the reminder that we can also choose to carry the cross to carry the hard things in life and to make choices that sometimes aren't easy. Help us to remember when life gets hard that Jesus is there and that you love us. Help us to have a great week. Help us to think about the things that we can let go of. In your name we pray, amen. Amen, my friends. I'll see you next time, goodbye.